guys. I love it because everywhere I've been, people have flirted with me. I realise it's because they work for tips. <laughs> but I appreciate it because I'm in my late 30s, so I really appreciate it. <laughs> Like, I've got to that point where I've had to start saying to guys, seriously, do you mind not talking to my face? They're right here. <laughs> here, to be fair. But <laughs> what have I got to do to get objectified? Never thought I'd miss sexism till I got to my late 30s. I'm not saying guys don't approach me in bars anymore. They still do, obviously. But it is to get around me. <laughs> ah, yeah, a guy come up to me in a club recently and he went, excuse me, and I went, yes. And he went, no, just excuse me. <laughs> just want to get a beer. So soak up that disappointment. <laughs> I'm in my late 30s, which is like 700 in Hollywood years. So I've been told. But I can play Immortals, which is pretty cool. But even being this age, I would still like there to be pregnancy rumours about me. Just to keep me hot, you know, in the moment. Keep the interest there. Like, is she pregnant? Isn't she pregnant? Will she keep it? We don't know. <laughs> I don't know. At least if you get pregnant here from a one-night stand or a bang-over, as I like to call it. <laughs> now, you can have that, guys. You're welcome. <laughs> At least if that happens, you know, you can take the morning-after pill. You know, you can do that. You have one here, don't you, called uh, Plan B that prevents pregnancies. In the UK, we have a rapper called Plan B who also prevents pregnancies with his face. <laughs> so... Very similar. <laughs> I like North America. I like the continued optimism in, in the face of continued shitstorms. Like, there's a positivity and an attitude here that we don't have in the UK. Just like, as audiences, you guys are better. You just you know that, right? You are better. Yeah, it doesn't matter what it is. It could be the cinema, you know? It could be theatre. It could be stand-up comedy. But uh, you guys go in with one attitude and one attitude alone, and it is this. This is gonna be awesome. <laughs> yeah, that's what you guys go in with. That's not what we do in the UK. No. In the UK, we go in going, this is gonna be shit. <laughs> it's what we want, it's what we need, it's what we deserve because we hate ourselves. <laughs> We're all a little bit dead inside. <laughs> you guys, it just pops, you know? It's nice, it's really nice. I went to the cinema when I was in New York, in Queens, because I know how to live. Ah, oh, yeah. I went to see the film Anchorman 2. I went with my friend Rich and uh, my very Scottish boyfriend. Uh, so we went to see the film Anchorman 2 with my, with my friend Rich and my very Scottish boyfriend. You don't need to know his name for this, just that he is a stereotype. So just trust me. Right? Got into the cinema and I was like, wow, the audience here are so full of hope and enthusiasm and optimism. There were a couple of girls from Queens sat behind us, right? And anytime anything cute happened on the screen, they would like vocalize it. They were really engaged. They were like, oh my God, there's a puppy. Oh my God. That is so cute. Look at that cute puppy. Oh my God. And the man in front of us talked the entire way through the film. The only way I can describe what the guy in front of me was doing was as if he was narrating the film for the blind. <laughs> Literally everything that happened on the screen came out of his mouth. There's a point in Anchorman 2 where Steve Carell is doing the weather, right? And he's on the weather map and it's a green screen and he's wearing green trousers, right? So his legs disappear and the guy in front of me is losing his tiny fucking mind. <laughs> He's like, oh my God, what happened to Steve Carell's legs? Like his legs were there and then they were gone. What the hell happened to Steve Carell's legs? Steve Carell has fallen on the floor because he's got no legs. What happened to Steve Carell's legs? At which point my very Scottish boyfriend jumps up and goes, listen to me, pal, you better have a Labrador and a fucking white stick. Otherwise it's going to be you with no legs. <laughs> And the girls from Queens are like, oh my God, you're Scottish, that's so cute. Oh my God, we're Scottish. <laughs> we got thrown out. <laughs> Amazing, you know, I, I like that. I like that attitude. Sometimes it goes too far though, you know, because you know, you gifted the world for jazzling. Now, <laughs> I don't know how you lot feel about vajazzling, but I genuinely believe it is a plot by religious groups to get gay men interested in vaginas. 
by making them look like disco balls. I said to my mum about it, I said, mum, they do this thing now, it's this like thing that's come over, um, you know, it's, it's for jazzling. What they do is they put like some diamante on your downstairs, like spritz it up, bedazzle it. <laughs> and my mum was like, for jazzling? Pfft, in my day, you were lucky if you gave it a wash. <laughs> Keep calm, don't wash it, ladies and gents. Thanks so much.